Hi, welcome to Guyana. Come experience, explore, and enjoy beautiful Guyana. Uh, tropical, nature, pristine uh, destination. We are 80% of the rainforest is still intact. Where we have the largest single drop waterfall in the world, the Kaitor Falls, one sheer drop, 741 feet. Where we have Iwakrama, one million acres of tropical rainforest given up to the world community for international conservation and for scientific research. We also have several other waterfalls. We have nine indigenous tribes living in Ghana. Fascinating culture, a mix of six different people living together in Guyana. We also have the best rum in the world, El Dorado. We have a fine cuisine, some of the best local cuisine in the world. Guyana is a land of six races, also known as land of many waters. Um, lots of river trips, safari await you. A land that is uh, also full of uh, forests, savanna. We are known for 800 species of bird. It's also a bird watcher's paradise. We want to welcome you to Guyana also to enjoy uh, our Rupununi savannas, our rodeo, our uh, Rockstone Fish Festival, Mastromani, and yes, in 2008, we will be hosting Cari Festa, where we expect over 30 uh, countries in Latin America and the Caribbean to participate um, in Cari Festa. It's the largest uh, cultural and arts festival held in this part of the world. Guyana hosted this in 1972, and again, we'll be hosting in 2008. Um, the Stabrook Market area for shopping in Georgetown, the nightlife is fantastic as well. Um, for meetings and conferences, we have uh, been host recently to the um, Cricket World Cup. We also hosted the Rio Summit, and just recently, the Commonwealth Finance Minister meeting. We are also known as a, de a destination for meeting um, and for exhibitions and events. We also have a brand new stadium where uh, sports is important in Ghana. Cricket um, is a wonderful game and Ghana has always been passionate about cricket. Um, cricket matches can also be organized and you can come, we can host world-class events. Um, Guyana will also allow you an opportunity to interact with our, our culture. We have long, a long tradition, six races living together in addition to nine indigenous tribes. We can visit um, communities where you can see how they live. Um, it's like a, a time capsule. You can see how these people exist in their communities and in the, um, how they, their customs and their tradition, the food, how they gather food, how they hunt, how they fish. Um, we have a whole lot of resorts as well, um, and this is not uh, white water and uh, white sand. We are not a sun, sand, sea destination. We are a nature, adventure, um, and culture destination. Bird watching is very, very popular. Guyana, matter of fact, is one of the few cities in the world where you can watch birds in the city. Over 200 species can be found in the capital city, Georgetown alone. We have the seawall. Guyana is below this, the sea level. We are below the Atlantic Ocean. The seawall offers a fantastic opportunity to interact with nature. You can watch the wide Atlantic Ocean that it comes in. It's used for jogging and exercise. It's a rendezvous. And at Easter, it's bursting with activity. We are uh, recently celebrated Diwali, the Festival of Lights. We also have uh, the rodeo. Easter is a big occasion in Ghana. Come December, we have a main street, Big Lime, um, where all Guyanese come out um, and party in the streets. Uh, in February, we have Mashramani coming up as well. And then not to forget Kari Festa in August, August 22nd to August 31st. So come to Guyana for this nature and um, adventurous, if, you're na if you love nature and if you love adventure. That's good.
You got you on. Well, good afternoon, or may I say buenos dias. You speak Spanish, yes. And you are from? Uh, you're from I'm from Ecuador. Ecuador, Ecuador. And I suppose you are from Ecuador as well? <laughs> yes, I'm from Ecuador. He's right. Now, t tell us something about this. This. Well, of course, you you will translate as well? Yes. Marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. Right. Now, my Spanish is very limited, so it's that's good. Um, tell us something about this costume. And uh, and you said you were danzante, is that right? Is that right? Quieren saber, quieren que les cuente algo de dónde viene la vestimenta y si son bailarines ustedes. Danzante. Traje tradicional de Ecuador. This, he's saying this is a danzante, which is a traditional uh, dancing uh, scheme in the Andes, in the highlands of Ecuador. Right, but was this, I mean, did this come from any of the major tribes or something in South America, in, in Ecuador? Que de donde nace la tradición, si viene algo, si es algo de tribu o de... La tradición nace del cacique del pueblo. Es un hombre muy importante que danza en honor al sol. Por eso es el color del... Okay, uh, let, let me try to go into it. He's saying that this is born uh, the, uh, centuries ago from the from the king of the region, uh, Cacique, uh, and he uh, pre uh, thanks uh, the godson. That's why this is the son, and uh, he dances to worship and thank him for all the fertility of the land. I, I, I see, and this obviously is something that wasn't lost with the with the conquistadores, the Spanish. They didn't take this away, did they? Que si, que si este tipo de tradiciones fueron eh, eh, robadas o, o perdidas en la conquista española. Eh, fueron antes de la conquista, son preincaicas. Fueron antes de la conquista y no se han perdido. Pues uh, he's saying that this started uh, on the Inca time and uh, they, they were lost when, uh, when the Spaniards came to Latin America. They are still uh, alive. Okay, well, let us see a little bit of this danzante, which is the dance, I suppose, danzante, the dance they're doing. And tell me, are, are they all as pretty as you are? Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, I'll be on the next plane. <laughs> all right. Well, there they are. And this is a traditional dance from this from Ecuador. This was something that wasn't lost when the Spanish, of course, invaded South America. And it is something that was retained. Uh, and as he said on his head there, there's a, a symbol of the sun, which was worshipped by the chief of the tribe, the cacique. And so this dance has continued, and it's still done in Ecuador. And isn't that girl pretty? Yeah, this is Levi Roots live and direct, so don't bother worrying now, no fret. Yeah, I'm live at the Jamaica stand at the World Travel Market. Now, you know, the world knows that my reggae reggae sauce represent Jamaica. Um, Jamaica, the land of my birth. Jamaica, where the inspiration for my sauce came from. So this is why I'm here to big up my own country and to put something back. It's been fantastic since I was in the Dragon's Den. I managed to slay the dragons to get my reggae reggae sauce from here to here and now i just want to say give thanks and say to people come to jamaica the land of wood and water now hasn't turned to motor vehicle or manslaughter 
So we are here to big up the whole aspect of Jamaica, how wonderful it is. Yes, the home of reggae reggae sauce, the home of Levi Roots. And if we could all now get on a plane and jump back and go to Jamaica and relax right where I'm from, in Clarendon. Yes, the most beautiful parish in Jamaica. I would say that because I'm from Clarendon, yes. Come to Clarendon, the most fantastic place in Jamaica, and you will have a wonderful time. Levi Roots, Reggae Reggae Sauce, I'm out. Buenos dias, senorita. Now, my Spanish is not very good, but where are you from? Uh, I am from Peru. You're from Peru. And what is this, this costume? What is this? Uh, this is a, a traditional costume from Cusco, which is uh, Machu Picchu. It's based, as you can see over there, that's Machu Picchu ruins, and they are in Cusco. And this is typical from the people from the farm in the highlands of Peru. Right, I see. Just like that. How do they manage to work in costumes like this? Yeah, well, basically, the, the scare, they always use a scare like that. It has a lot of layers underneath because it's quite cold. But this jacket is only for special parties, right. for special seasons. So that's why it has a lot of blink blink and, uh, you know, sparkly scenes. Right, I see. I see. Well, you look, you're, looking very, very, you're looking very nice, and I'm sure you must have attracted a lot of attention. I will certainly go around and see some more and learn a little bit more about Peru. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, welcome to Barbados Stand this year at that World Travel Market. And we're here to present the island as the ideal destination of the Caribbean. This year we are focusing on weddings. Um, 
so that you know that we're, if it's the perfect place for you to tie the knot in Barbados and we cater it to whatever you want. That's just weddings. Let's say you're coming over, loads of people, let's say in, in 2009, the right time to be in Barbados is when England will be playing the West Indies in the cricket series. The island comes alive. In Barbados, cricket is more um, important to the people of Barbados than religion. Um, if you go anywhere, you will obviously hear people talking about cricket. They are very passionate. So that would be an excellent time to be in Barbados. And while that's happening, there's the, the other events surrounding the cricket, which we know you can come and, and, and enjoy. If you are not that much of a cricket uh, supporter, let's say you are one of these ladies and you're going down with the husband, he'll go to the cricket and you can find extra things to do as a cricket widow. The beach is exactly right next door. You've got rum tours, you've got swimming, you've got um, personalized cap um, catamaran tours. You can do your Jolly Roger cruise if you choose to do that. Inland, you've got the island safari where we take you off the major roads and you go and see the interior of Barbados. And then you stop at different points for your, to get your pictures for your albums. And usually that's filled with a, bit, a little bit of rum punch. Of course, you know, we make rum. We've got the best rum in the world. And we've also got about three or four distilleries that you can go tour, see how the rum is made, taste it, drink it, bring some back with you. For when it gets cold out there, put a little bit of heat in the system. Okay, my name is Mr. Mighty, my partner Ricky. is Ricky, and we're from Red Promotions that promote the excursion. It's a year-to-year -year excursion in Barbados, and we work with, in conjunction with Vibes FM from here, and with all the top DJs from Hot FM and from The One, 98.1 The One in Barbados. And we link up with some of the top DJs down there and we have a wicked time in Barbados. Um, definitely want other people to get on board and check out our website, redpromotions.co.uk. www.redpromotion.co.uk. Um, basically, it's every year, September, we travel with a large group of people. Um, we advertise it in London. Um, basically, we print flyers, 20,000 flyers, um, and we fly with Virgin over to Barbados, and it's a week excursion. We're currently seeking sponsorship from um, big businesses and the BTA, so if you guys could make a contact with us, it would be great, and we're here to network our thing.
this is Hugo Gunning. I'm on this Ecuador stand and I'm speaking to Senor Tamaris, who will tell me something about the history of these dancers that we just saw. They, 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 uh, tam uh, they marimba, marimba, the marimba players and dancers. Now, I am curious, I'm curious, Senor, how did black people get to Ecuador? Well, we have a grand black Afro, we call it Afro-Ecuadorian, Afro-Ecuadorian population in Ecuador on the northern coast. The black um, slaves at that time came on board these Spanish ships and they escaped into this northern jungle coast. And what's important about this area is that this area is, was, is one of the most biodiverse spots in all the world. And these, um, uh, the, the black people, when they came in, this was dominated by the first, it was, it, when they were there, there were for thousands of years, there was pre-Columbian Indians, natives. And when they saw the black people from, uh, from the Zulus, from the, from the different tribes that were coming in, they thought of them as gods because it was the first time they ever saw a black person in their life. So they were treated as gods and they became authorities. Imagine the first South American painting that was autographed had the three authorities. In this land, nobody could get in or get out without the permission of the black authorities. And the colonial leaders of the Spanish colonial leaders in Quito, up in the Andes, in the, the capital, they had their vice royalties and everything. They had asked for please the authorities to come in and, and to meet them. And they came to meet them. In the first meeting, they painted these three authorities, black, beautiful, silk, Spanish silk robes, but with the Afro-Ecuadorian, with pre-Columbian nose rings, golden and everything. It's just an incredible painting. This is the first South American painting that was autographed. This was in uh, 1599. And now that, that, pic, that, uh, that painting is in the Museo del Prado in Spain. And it's always goes around and tour making and winning a lot of um, awards. So we have, it was the first Republic of South America it was called the Republic of the Zambos. Imagine, and it was led by the Afro-Ecuadorian. This is the greatest story that not even too many Ecuadorians know, and we are the promotion board is starting to promote. Yes, I am curious about that. The reason with Ecuador is quite cold, so I didn't think that black people would like that very much. You, you yeah. come, you come off a slave ship and you get into a country where it's pretty cold. No, 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 no. no. no it's not this cold. On the, because we have the four worlds. We have the Pacific Coast, the Andes Mountains, and the Amazon jungle. On the Pacific Coast, in the Amazon, we're on the equator. It's very hot. Right. But the thing is that the Andes, like a living wall, goes up to 6,000 meters. We have the highest active volcanoes. And in that area, it's you have cold weather. Right. And you have snow on the equator. So it's a beautiful country. So if you guys see this, please come to Ecuador. Right. Well, uh, the thing about when you said they escaped, I imagine they would make for the hills. But, <laughs> no, these, no, no. but these guys, are, I mean, these, these people have, this is a sort of West African faces. So obviously they must have come out of sort of Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, or yes. somewhere, someplace in West Africa. But yes. I really, truly, the history of black people people in Ecuador is virtually unknown. So that's why I wanted that bit of history. Yes, yeah, so it's one of my aims to promote more that Afro-Ecuadorian culture and to make sure that the Afro-Americans and the Africans themselves and the Africans that live in Europe come to Ecuador and visit our, our country. Well, thank you very much, Senor. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. A usted, Senor. <laughs> Yes, Patrick. Um, as you know, I'm from Antigua, uh, one of the most beautiful countries in the world. We do have um, some of the most beautiful beaches, uh, one for each day of the year, 365 beaches. And probably next year we'll find an extra beach. Um, we are situated in the heart of the Caribbean. Our temperature stays 
somewhere between 86 and 87 degrees uh, year round. Uh, our greatest asset is our people. Um, the people are very warm, um, friendly, and uh, as of course I mentioned the beaches and the constant sunshine. And uh, the vegetation is also very beautiful. Um, you know, I, I do encourage people to come to Antigua because uh, uh, it's also the home of Viv Richards, if you know who Viv Richards is, and um, Andy Roberts and, and um, Richard Richardson. Uh, those are some of the people that we produce in Antigua. Um, tourism is our main, main industry in Antigua, so you know for it to be the, our main industry, we, we really have to take care of our people, all our visitors that come to the island. Um, we, 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 we for out of the UK, we have several airlines that fly out of the UK, and uh, most of our present-day tourism or uh, our, our, our visitors comes out of the UK uh, uh, and Europe. So you know we have to be good in order to attract these people. Any other question you'd like to ask, Patrick? Okay, any special packages for Christmas? Any special packages? Yes, there are a number of packages that you can um, get from the different hotels, from basic packages to all-inclusive in luxury hotel like the Hermitage Bay, uh, the Jolly Beach, and so on. There are a number of budget packages. And um, you can go online, you can check the Antigua website, and you'll be able to obtain these, uh, this information about uh, special packages. Okay, I mean, that, that's great. Um, just a final message to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Island. My final message is to say to you, you're welcome in Antigua. You'll be treated like kings and queens, and um, we we really enjoy. We don't just act artificially. The people act in their natural self, friendly and warm at all times. And we do encourage you to come to our country. Right. Hugo Gunning at the WTM, the World Travel Market. Many, many countries here. In fact, all the countries of the world, you can travel around the world here on foot for the first time, for, for the very first time. I am here on the El Salvador stand. Now, El Salvador is a rather small country, but they're doing something quite interesting here. They're actually weaving. So, se Senorita or, or, or Senora, what, what, what's your name? Gloria. 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 Isn't it marvelous? Very simple. Very simple. She obviously knows I don't speak very much Spanish. So now, can you tell us something about what you're doing? Well, this is uh, one of the looms that we use in our, our country. What she's weaving there is a backstrap loom. That is a real uh, traditional loom in El Salvador. And it's mostly used by women, as you can see. And with this, when women's we create a different kinds of products right and i take it that this is the finished product this 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 length of cloth here and we have all these colors so obviously there are different uh different colors and so on. women are always like that they always like things to be very pretty <laughs> yes <laughs> so tell me and what do the men do the men wear any of this woven uh material Yes, they do weaving in um, floor loom. In what? Floor loom. I see. Yes, it's a different loom. You can see it there in that here. We, over there. Right. Well, if you hold it up to the camera, hold it up, let the, hold it. Yes, if you hold that up. Right. I see. Right. And we also use different threads. She's using 100% cotton dyed with indigo and coconut. This one is indigo dyeing too. 
but this one is acrylic. Right. And where did this art come from? Where did this originate? Where, I mean, which of, where, your ancestors, where did it come from? Mm. Do you know? Yes, it's the Mesoamerican area. We are all the same, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico. We all share the same background. Well, yes. So, so one of the tribes, I don't know what was the predominant tribe in El Salvador. But Mayas. The, the Maya. Pipiles, yes. Right. So that's where this comes from. Yes, that's it. Good. All right. Well, let you continue working so that we can, we, we, we can see exactly what you need. We don't want you idling, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see you working. And these girls, you see these girls are from Trinidad and Tobago. I, I don't think they would quite wear something like that because yeah. it seems to be rather hot, actually. It seems to be rather, is it? What? Does it keep you hot? Yes. It yes. does? The cotton does, yes. The cotton does. Well, I don't think we quite want that in Trinidad, but there you are. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You have a bag? My mobile and my glasses in case I need them. Well, I'm here on the Jamaica stand this time with the famous, or the now Levi Roots. I remember when I saw him first, when he was promoting the sauce, we were singing together, reggae sauce, reggae sauce. But now, of course, he's, a, he's, a, he's probably a millionaire by now. Have you made it yet? Yes, indeed, I have. But, you know, more importantly, it's been flanked by these two beautiful women. I, you know, I feel like a sandwich, a, a nice, fat, ital sandwich. <laughs> Covered, covered with reggae sauce. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful, yeah. Now tell me, how has this campaign gone? Because it's now in Sainsbury's, it's all over the place. So I no longer have to walk behind you and your guitar singing reggae sauce. How has it gone? Well, it's been fabulous. You know, reggae, reggae sauce is now, we've sold over a million bottles of sauce in nine months. We're outselling every other sauce there is in the condiment line in the UK. Um, the, so the, the program Dragon's Den is now going to be in America and Fox TV. So I'm hoping that it will have the same response that it did over here and it will be like a household name. And we'll even make more money. Well, I tell you what. As when you when you've made it, I have a large begging bowl, and I and I will and I will come and see you. So I suppose the girls can each have a bottle, can't they? Yes. Yes, they, 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 they can. can they, they, they can indeed. Don't give them anything else. I know what you guys are like. <laughs> Well, fantastic. And you know, just being here, big enough Jamaica, because that's what reggae, reggae sauce is about. That's what it says. It says it's Jamaican, it's black, and it's reggae music. And with those three things, you know, I dedicate it to the people because it's them who saw me on the TV and just liked the way that I, I made my presentation, even though I messed up a little bit. But people still liked it. They thought I was honest. And this is how reggae, reggae sauce now has become iconic. So tell me now, you don't sing anymore? Well, I do. I mean, it's great. It's great to um to knowing that I'll be able to get back in the music because music has always been about my life. But I, I like to say that I am the ultimate entrepreneur because I managed to mix my, my pleasure, which is my music, with my business is my source music. So, yeah, it's fantastic. So while I'm at work, I'm still effectively at play. Well, thank, thank you very much. And as I said, don't forget the begging bowl is out there. <laughs> no, put not in the oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. yes, I understand you have, what, so what, we have reggae, salsa, what, what are the other ones? Yes, well, you know, Fabulous, they have something called Fabulous called Levi Roots' Love Apple Sauce. And it's as beautiful as these two beautiful girls next to me. And again, we have a next new one called Fiery Guava. 
and it's fantastic to see that the sauce is moved on from just being something that's just like a one sauce that was made in my kitchen with my children to now being the most fabulous and fantastic thing in the UK. So I give thanks to Rastafari for that, you know. I see. So you no longer have to say one sauce, one sauce. <laughs> no, I say 150,000 sauce, 150,000. Well, thank you very much. Here's a man with as many varieties as Heinz, or maybe more. Thank you very much, Levi. Best of luck to you. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a photograph of you and the girls. Mr. Hugo, that's what I was telling you. Yes, I am now on the Guatemala stand, and we are watching at a couple of dancers here who are doing a traditional dance. I think it may be a traditional Mayan dance, and I hope to talk to them a little later on. And uh, it seems to be some sort of animation, but the way they're dancing and the way they're looking, obviously, it's some sort of perhaps some sort of sun worship, but I'm only guessing. So when I get them off the stand, then we can talk to them. Um, it's whatever it is, I can tell you it's probably some quite serious stuff here. Well, perhaps I may get some explanations to what it's all about, because I'm now with Senora, Senora, Al, Senor, well, Senora Alvarez. Um, tell me, what is exactly is this dance? Okay, um, this is a Majan dance. Uh, they are representing the gods from the, the Mayan culture. Their names were, is uh, the Dios Ixchel. And um, this is an extract of the book of the Mayan culture called Popol Vuh. That, that, that is uh, the sacred book of the Mayan culture. Well, this seems to be quite serious. I mean, when did they dance this? This would be some, uh, I don't know, sun worship or some... There must be some occasion for this. It's probably, it doesn't seem to be a very happy occasion. So what, what is it all about? Uh, okay, because uh, this is a rhythm that, that they are uh, trying to represent. So uh, they have to adore the nature and all the blessings that uh, the main God uh, give uh, for, for the earth and the nature. And what is that mask on his head? What, what, what's, the, what's that? The, the, the thing yes, that they the have head, the, the head? The head, yes. Okay, uh, this is, uh, the, it represents uh, the, 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 the faces of the Mayan and it's the, the, the threads are uh, the different colors that uh, uh, represent also this culture. I see. Well, thank you very much, Senor Alvarez. Uh, can I get... <laughs> Action! Well, I'm now on the Cuban stand and I have a man who says his name who's making, actually making cigars. Cubes, you know, he's actually making cigars. So he's now, I think I'm going to ask him, although he doesn't speak very much English, to show us how he makes a cigar. So Jose, how do you make a cigar? Can you can you make a cigar for me? Uh, yeah, can you? 
Can he make a cigar for me? Yes. On. Sí, si sí. Right. Okay. 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 Right. Isabel. Right. Isabel. Right. So he's got he's got the tobacco leaf. I've noticed his hands, his fingers. You know, they seem to be very adept. So he's putting two leaves now, three leaves together, trimming them. He's going to he's going to trim them up. Yes. He takes the leaf. He's folding one. So he takes now takes the strips, puts them all together. And now he's going to roll this into a cigar. Now, this is a traditional way of making them, although they now have machines which can do this sort of thing. There's nothing like they handmade, and especially the Cuban cigar. That's usually quite special and commands a fair price. So he's now trimming the ends off. A little bit of adhesive. Right? And now he takes a larger leaf, another leaf, from out of a special pack. I don't know what's the difference between these leaves, but this is probably the outer portion of the cigar, the outer covering. And he trims that as well. And now he's going to roll that over the, what he did before, because this seems to be the outer cover very carefully look at his fingers his fingers are very adept he obviously has been doing this for out for quite a long while so he cuts he trims again bit of adhesive he keeps rolling taps it with the cutter now he's trimming the ends off takes the rest of the leaf he's going to trim that as well makes a sort of not a complete circle he's got a little bit off let's see what he does with that oh so he's going to roll that around the end now and that's the end of the cigar when you buy a cigar this is the end you trim and you cut off now that presumably seals what he's got in there seals the tobacco in so that when and he has a little cutter, he's cut it there. And there you are, cigar. Do I look like a millionaire? Strange thing here, all the men are looking at me. <laughs> I'm sure I look like a millionaire. Gracias, senor, gracias, gracias.
Uh, you've just witnessed um, a display of beautiful dancing of the tango. We are on the Argentinian standard with me, Senor Vidal, who will tell us something about it. Because it's curious. How does the tango, how did it get, say, from Europe to Argentina? Why is it developed in Argentina as opposed to Bolivia or any other country? Can you tell us, Senor Vidal? Yes. The history say that uh, perhaps possible in the 18th, 18th century, the, uh, the tango perhaps will play in, uh, will dance in, in Spain, some part of Spain, but not, not exactly, some people say in, in Italy, but they came to Argentina at the beginning of the, of the last century. And one, one of the important thing, and they, the dance originally, the dance between men, not men and women like nowadays and uh, it's perhaps one of the more emblematic points of our country not only buenos aires our capital if not of our country the tango well it would be interesting to have men dancing it the way i would i would certainly like to see a man doing some of those steps and and relating to another man but um so it developed in argentina now curiously what i found is that the Poles, I mean, from Poland, seem to like the tango as well. So, and the, the story about that is that the Poles um, learnt this dance, so their soldiers fighting in Europe with under Napoleon, so, so it in Paris. So that's where it started off, and that's why the Poles like it. So the Polish soldiers to get back there. So are we assuming then that, again, did the French take it out to Argentina, or did the Spanish take it to Argentina? No, I suppose what I, uh, until I, I know, that the French, they, they learn, they learn tango, I don't know if from Argentina or Juan, but many years ago, perhaps at the beginning of the last century, the Argentinian went to Paris, many tango, not only tango dancers, tango musician, to, 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 to show our tango. And from that, I suppose that the tango, the tango in, in Paris especially, they love too much from, 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 for that reason, no? I see. I see. Well, it's, this is very all very interesting. Um, and it's a very interesting part, bit of history. Because we see people dancing the tango, and it was beautifully done here. And even behind me, there's an image of two people dancing the tango. And it's one South American country is all associated with Argentina. So we're very curious about that. But thank you very much, for, for, for Senor Vidal, for telling us all about this. Because... Like many other countries here, as I pointed out to, people, to, every, to everybody, the world is here, every country of the world. And so we are coming across a lot, of, a lot of history here, above all things. And perhaps an added incentive to travel to Argentina to learn all these things. Senor Vidal, muchas gracias. Thank you, you. Thank you very much.
Hello and welcome to Trinidad and Tobago's booth here in World Trade Event World Trade Market 2007. And we're here to tell you about our lovely island of Trinidad and Tobago. And we'll begin with Trinidad. Well, uh, well, I'm from Central Trinidad, and he's from South Trinidad. And um, for Christmas, we have like parang, and uh, I think it's the best time to go for Christmas because there's loads of food to eat. And don't mind, don't mind how I look at anything, but I really eat. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come now, man. Don't be doing them things now. <laughs> yeah. No, but <laughs> no, but to be to be quite honest, I mean, Christmas is like the time of family. You know, the Christmas spirit. There's parang that we have in Trinidad as well, and your first experience of Trinidad should be Christmas time. That's what I think. And especially coming from the UK, when it's cold, it's the best time to get away because we have loads of sun and the beaches and whatnot. Don't forget the food. And then we, that, which brings us around to January, February, which is the month of carnival. Yeah. Yes. Let me know when you want to step in, when you want me to step in, because I need to turn on Tobago boots. Having a drink, having a good time, this is what we're all about. Yeah, we just come out, we just see the Trinidadians, we tr see other people, we have a drink, we have a little laugh. Well, I'm hoping to wine on this nice young lady this evening. But I don't know how lucky I will get the cameraman smiling. <laughs> you understand? But anyway, this is what Trinidad is about. It's about meeting people, having fun, and <clears throat> having a good time. So whenever you're ready, come down to Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, Tobago. You'll get nice water, nice sand. Come to Trinidad if you want to see nice, <clears throat> nice little... Um, Waterfalls. Well, if you want to call it nice woman, I want to know how nice you is. You Whatever. And uh, moving right along, yeah. Yes, we have beautiful women in Trinidad. To be a good to wear, to be a good too. But um, when it's carnival time, all the women is come across to Trinidad. The, the pretty ones in Tobago and the ones that they already have in Trinidad. So for the men, February is a good time to come. <laughs> No, but honestly, <laughs> when you gonna be in Trinidad? Why you want to know that for? I want to come and see you in Trinidad. Nah, well, you see, no, it's, no, no, so I'm not telling them. I mean, you get cheap ticket to come to Trinidad. You get nice hotels in Trinidad, and you can come and visit me in Trinidad. Well, speaking of cheap ticket, right? Last year, I got a ticket from um, flycrc.com, www.flycrc.com, and they have the most brilliant, brilliant specials. You, I think you could um. You could probably put up your email address or whatever, and they just email you all the different um, the different flights, and you just take a pick. They actually have stuff for Jamaica as well, you know. So if I come to Canada, where do you think I should stay if I want to see you? By me? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, I have a rum punch. I'm having a good time. You catch a flight, you can check www.whatevertheturner.com um, is. You check that, you come down. Right now I jump because I'm on real serious rum punch, and it's straight from Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> So, come down anytime you're ready, because me, I, I want to meet this young lady down there. So if you meet me, meet me. If you don't meet me, God bless and take care. Bye, take care. Bye.
lot more about this dance, but nobody seems to know except, of course, it was brought in the African stage. And of course, again, a fusion of cultures. We have a drum here that's very much European, and then we have a lot of drums like the conga drum, which is very African. I've been trying to find somebody who can tell me about this capoeira. I have already worked out that it's obviously of African origin because you have African drums and then you have the athleticism of your dancers and so on. But is there anything as your costume, of course, the colors and so on, that's a touch that, that originated from the Brazilian carnival, that's all, these colors and so on. Is there anything else you can tell us? Yes, is there anything? Uh, really, I don't know. Uh, why? Because you have a mix here. True. Capoeira and these clothes come from Rio de Janeiro, not from Capoeira. Mm -hmm. And Capoeira comes from Bahia. Oh, because capoeira, is a, capoeira is a province. So a, 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 no, no, Capoeira is the name from the dance. dance. Right. Yeah, yeah, Capoeira is the name. But this coming from Africa. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. And uh, yeah, today all Brazil do Capoeira. Children in the school, you learn Capoeira. You have to learn in Brazil today in the school Capoeira. Because that instrument is playing, like the one string sort of violin with a, with a calabash or a, 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 a gourd at the end, that's an African instrument. Yes, but in Brazilian, I don't know why, you don't do it with hand, you do it with stick. Yeah. I don't know why. And uh, you have djembes in Africa and everything, drums with hand. But in Brazil, don't use. Because I think, because for example, in Carnaval you have bands, summer bands, about... 300 people together and played. And they have to be have law. I don't, I don't know really why. 
Yes, well, I can tell you what, what happened was the Africans play with their hands, but when you, when you see, you've copied a bit of Europe and a bit of Africa. Now, this drum, a drum like this, is more European. The, the, the other one, the guy was playing the conga or the, the, the tumba, the, 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 the long one, yes. that's more African. So, you have the two, there's a fusion of the two cultures, and that's what evolved. I can see how it all evolved. I, I, I don't know really why. Why? I don't know, but I think. Because in Brazil you have one big mix from Europa, Africa, and the Brazil people was there before. For me, I think some people ask me why is you have this drum not Africa. I think because uh, it's easy to play it, this drum what stick all the hand. But will will sorry I don't. Know. <laughs> in most of our countries it doesn't matter at all. In fact, I don't think we give a damn. But we just play the music. Yeah, just just to play music, of course. What the, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you I very much. True. Thank you, true, thank true. you. Because Hi, my name is Giovanni Grant. I work for the Bahamas Tourist Office here in the UK. Just want to let everyone know the 700 beautiful islands of the Bahamas. It's a beautiful place to come down. The weather is fantastic. Over the Christmas holidays, we have our native festival called Junkanoo. Rhythm, color, fantastic music. It's definitely something to see first thing on Boxing Day morning and on New Year's Day. Unlimited beach, friendly, friendly people, excellent food. The islands of the Bahamas is where you should be over the Christmas holidays. Well, on behalf of Miss Trinidad and Tobago UK, we'd like to present you with this award to say thank you for all your support for the pageant. You're welcome. I'll make sure I, I have this on my mantle, please, with um, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, girls.